Je ne peux pas When I hear the phrase I think of when you are out cheering and you're trying to catch one of those last weathers and he flies through the air, headbutts you in the eye, uh, leaves you with a nice bruiser, and then you continue shearing. You get it done. You figure out a way to, to make it work despite everything that may be mounting against you. Uh, that's what I think about. And then you plan the next butchering. <laughs> Man, it, you know, there's a, there's a song from uh, Bruce Springsteen, and it's our anthem song. Because when we're really when we're down and out, um, I put that song on, and it, it you know it says there's going to be hard times coming, there's going to be good times coming, but there's also going to be hard times coming. Um, swing that ball at me because I'm going to I'm going to grab it and I'm going to work hard. I'm going to work as hard as I can to do what needs to be done. You know, it, it, it's, it's just being honest and upfront and working your butt off, you know, bring that wrecking ball on is, is, is all I can say. And that's, that's what I, the word, you know, is, is that. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our uh, our series, Tall With It Be, hosted by the Navajo Cultural Arts Program and our folks over in the School of Arts, our Fine Arts and Humanities and English. Uh, we wanted to, first of all, welcome our guest um, converse. Stationist, I guess that would be. Uh, Peter Sanyazi, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so excited to have you in here, not because you are just an amazing um, painter and uh, just a fine two-dimensional artist, uh, but because we know that you you contribute a lot to the programming here at Diné College. This is not your first time uh, participating with our programs over here, so we're welcoming you back to Diné College. And without further ado, if you would like to introduce your live on our Janae College Facebook page, as well as KXWR uh, Warrior Radio. All right. Um, thank you so much for having me and inviting me. So, yeah, 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 Thank you for having me. No, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and it's great to have somebody from over in the lower Greasewood area. We have a Greasewood over here in Lakachuke. And so my dad's actually from the and so when I tell people that he's from uh, Greasewood, they always think he's over here from the LA side. And I'm like, no, no, heading that 
way <laughs> that way. <laughs> so it's wonderful to have you here and and to know that people know the difference between the different uh, uh, different grease woods. Yes. That's the first thing that you know. A uh, question that we have for you is if you could tell us a little bit about uh, the mediums, the art mediums that you work with. Um. As so. For me, uh, being an artist, I think like any artist, um, there's something about jumping between mediums. And early on, I sort of learned that um, the more you experiment, the more you learn. So art for me is a lot about problem solving. So um, I work in two dimensional art. So painting, just like your you know, drawings or working on with watercolor, acrylic, I do a little bit of oil. Um, so I enjoy that. I'm also a big fan of printmaking, so which is also again a little bit technical, but it's also uh, again it has its own challenges. Um, printmaking, and then also um, I do a little bit of sculpture. Um, so I do some carvings um, that I uh, call yeti wall sculptures. So, um, so those are the the primarily uh, the primary mediums that people uh, know me for. Um, but I also just recently, uh, I got back into jewelry. I did a little bit of jewelry when I was a student over in um, Santa Fe at the Institute of American Indian Arts. Um, so just now, now getting back into that. So that's still something new for me. So there's always something new to try. So. That's right. Um, and I love uh, when artists come in with all those different types of backgrounds, because I feel like it, I, I read a little bit about your bio and you talked to, about, you know, inspiration and we heard like Tony Abeda talk about it and just like all these artists who pull from all these different types of mediums, it, it just enriches uh, their, their abilities to produce at, at a, at a higher level, just in like from a, a conceptual standpoint, I guess um, when when's the first time uh, that you were experienced that you realized that art was a calling of yours? Um, I I did you know very little as far as I could recall very little art growing up. Um, you know I didn't really draw or paint. Um, it's always um, fascinating for me to hear like other artists, some of the big names you know, in Native art, how some of them have been doing it, you know, since they could remember. So, which, uh, which I think is great. Um, I always, you know, I, my, I always tell my students um, that I started late, um, late meaning high school. That's when I stumbled onto it. Um, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't because I was good at it. And I usually say that often, um, but there at the Net College, you guys have a professor by the name of Don White Singer. So he was the high school oh art teacher. God. So, so he was teaching a class over at Holbrook High School. And I happened to take a class and it was just sort of for fun. You know, uh, I was able to take it and I, I enjoyed it. You know, the way he went about teaching, um, the way he went about encouraging his students, um, I think for me was uh, very important. Um, so that was the first, pretty much the first introduction to actual art. Um, and then it just went on from there. Uh, my junior year, I took his class and then my senior year, I just enjoyed it so much, I took it over again. So, um, and that was the, you know, for me, when I look back, that was like the beginning. Um, but, you know, the, the more time passed by, um, um, also for me, it was, sometimes we hear art therapy. That's pretty much what it was. Um, in high school, when I was like about a sophomore, halfway through high school, um, I lost all I, all I, I lost my mom. So, so that art class, it was really a way for me to get away from, from you know what was around me and sort of have me focus on that. So, um, so that's how I started. So it wasn't because I was good at it. I wasn't naturally good at art, but um, I always tell my students, you know, you can learn it. I mean, if you see my paintings then to now, you know, if I could do it, anybody could do it. That's what I, that's what I think. It's really 
really inspiring to hear that. We, we host um, little um, workshops, first Friday workshops. And so that's one of the things that we tell our, that we tell our participants is that you don't really need any kind of anything fancy, just a pen, some paper and, and maybe a little bit of instruction. And so, um, so I definitely, I, I enjoy hearing that. So talking about your students, can you tell us a little bit about your, um, what you do on your side job, I guess? Yes. Um, well, at this, uh, at this point, I am a um, art instructor over at, uh, in Holbrook. Uh, that's my main campus, but on, with uh, Northland Pioneer College. And they have a few locations, some on the reservation, some off the reservation, but they also, have, you know, MPC offers a lot of, you know, gives a lot of opportunities to the students. And, you know, of course, um, you know, their student body is, is diverse, like a lot of other schools in the area. So it's great. Um, so what I do there is I started the um, position in 2011. That's when I started. Uh, they brought me on to their um, their school and their faculty. And since then, it's been great. Um, I teach the drawing, the painting. I teach art appreciation. I also um, develop uh, printmaking for them. Well, they already have print presses there. But when I got there, I was like, oh, cool, you guys have printmaking presses. And, and I asked around, they're like, I don't know. We don't know what it's for. It's just sort of there. <laughs> so they were like, they're just kind of there. I was like, oh, man. I said, that's, you know. So anyways, I sort of revamped that. So I teach printmaking, too. Um, we sort of, you know, we kind of put it in where we can. Um, and then I'm also, so so those are my main focuses. And then also teach Native American art. Um, which I developed there for them also. So, so it's great. I'm very fortunate to be there. Um, you know, the, the people there are wonderful and I see it, you know, I, I'm the lucky one, you know, and I get to sort of pass on some of all the things that my instructors taught me, I could sort of pass it on to them. Um, so it's great. I'm very fortunate to be there. I know. So can you tell us a little bit about um well we had don on don white singer on and he was talking to us a little bit um last semester actually he ended our 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 fall series and he got a chance to talk about you know this transition during covid 19 to online distance learning i was hoping that you could talk to us a little bit about that because you know we're still struggling everybody's still kind of struggling and and even when you think you find a group you find another area that you need to improve yes. on. So um, if you could talk a little bit about the course delivery during this time period and how you're troubleshooting that. Yes, um, the whole COVID-19 kind of threw a wrench in everybody's plan. You know, it's one of those big challenges that nobody was expecting and it sort of happened. Um, so for me, I had to sort of recon reconfigure. So like the my lecture courses, I just ended up, you know, we just, I, I would just put slides up or pre-record slide lectures and then put them up and then students could access them there. So that one in a way was, was a doable, but the hard part for me was the hands-on. So usually in a drawing and painting environment, you know, in a classroom, I get to give the students, you know, their assignments. And then the funnest part is I get to do demos for them, you know, um, you know, I would sort of set up a canvas, I put my paints out and I sort of walked them through it. And then I just sort of paint as I'm talking, you know, so, um, so that was a big part of it. So with this whole pandemic thing, I had to open up a YouTube account. Um, even though I'm not a YouTuber, I had to sort of take that route because that was the only way. So, and then, so I would do, you know, uh, paintings on there for them, talk to it. Um, or you know, do drawings, get to get together. So that that became the delivery. Then I would just sort of give them the access codes to it, and then they could go and watch it. Um, um, so it kind of take. So it, it's fun though. It's a learning process. It was one of those things, and I'm not I'm not one that's good with technology. So I've had to sort of adjust myself, and you know, get that was one way how I could get my my point across to them. So. Um, but I think um, after um, two semesters of that, this being the third semester for me, um, I'm sort of finally at a place where I'm, I'm comfortable with doing that for them. 
and then a lot of times I would follow up and say, you know, do you guys have any questions? You know, what do you want? And, you know, what, what do you think? Or do you have more questions? So just, I, I think that's sort of been the route. The plus side is, um, you know, for me is that they could go back and watch the content as many times as they want to, you know? Usually in a class environment, I would do a demo. Then afterwards, they're like, "Oh, Mr. Yazi, you make it look so easy," you know. But then with a video, they could watch it as many times as they want to. So that was pretty cool. And and they once they have the code to it, they could you know they could watch it over and over as much as they want. So I guess that's the benefit of it. And some seem to enjoy it. Um, the other thing is, so uh, with Northland Pioneer College. A lot of our campuses are spread out, right? So sometimes only certain students can access, um, you know, you know, at an art class at one location. But with it being online, now I'm getting students from some of the further locations to take a class. Um, so I guess that's a benefit there. Um, but yeah, it most certainly did take some time to adjust to, but um, it, it's been good, good so far. I'm glad that you're finding all the positives about it because it's so easy to get stuck in, you know, that mind frame that this is just never going to work. And so that that, that adaptability, it, it's it's good to hear. It definitely is good to hear. Well, I'm really glad to get like instructor. I love when we get instructors on on the on our program. But I also want to talk about like you as an artist. So like you're that's like it's your gig like that's what we know you as as this amazing painter and, and so i was hoping that you could tell us a little bit about you know your definitions of success how did you know um that what you are doing now is something that you could make a living off of and earn prizes for um i as far as um art shows um goes um uh so so let me sort of kind of go back a little bit to high school so high school art classes were fine you know they, they were good they were a lot of fun and then my plan initially was to join the railroad i had you know in-laws and uncles and cousins they worked for the union pacific railroad and they seemed to do pretty well so that was my plan initially i was thinking okay get through high school get a driver license and then you know try to get on the railroad and do that and that was going to be it that was going to be the plan right there um however um um the through the end of high school i had a few art scholarships um i had one to npc that where i'm teaching at now they gave me a full tuition scholarship the university of evansville in indiana they also gave me a, a scholarship um, and then the Herd Museum out of Phoenix, they gave me a monetary scholarship and the biggest check I had ever seen then. <laughs> so they, they, you know, so they gave that to me. And then they also gave me a one week internship to NAU. So, you know, by, you know, that all sort of came at that time. And I was like, wow, this is, I wasn't expecting that, you know, so I really took it as, um, as a sign that maybe there was more there, you know? So it gave me a direction and I was like, okay, well, so I ended up at NPC and then it went from there. And in the art shows, um, back when I was in high school, I, I know um, Don was doing art shows, just one, you know, down the road and, and Sholo area, Pine Top, Sholo, you know, that area, he was doing a show there. Um, so I was like, okay, well, that could be fun, you know? So really, I just, you know, by then, at that point, I was working all the time. So I just happened just to get a booth just for fun, just to try it. Um, and that's how it started. And once I realized that, um, you know, people really appreciated it, you know, my work wasn't as, you know, I was still early on, but the reception I got for it was, um, was very good, very positive. On top of that, you know, they also, you know, put a few bucks in my pocket, you know, and then I was like, ah, oh, that was, you know, it just, it was just rewarding. It was just something I, I enjoyed, you know. So um, back to your question to what success is. Um, I think when it comes down to it, I think for me, it's being happy with what I'm doing. So for me, art is that, you know, it doesn't feel like work. You know, I tell my students, you know, you know, I'm, I'm here working, I'm here talking about art, I'm showing you guys how to, you know, I'm, I'm doing demos for you, 
I enjoy it, but you know, even if I didn't have this job, I would be doing it at home. <laughs> so I tell them, you know, so for me, the success is being happy with what you're doing. You know, I think um, I'm lucky that I'm not in a position where I dread going to work. It's like, ah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, you know, that sort of thing. But me, it's like, okay, good. You know, I'm off. I do that. You know, I sh so so it's been great. Um, so that was so those few things one one thing led to another and then you know um, I had an uncle um, that I got to meet right about around high school towards the tail end of high school his name is Raymond Yazi and he's for also from the area and he went to IAI so did Don so those were the two people I was like lo very looking up to then you know and they were telling me you need to get to IA you know that's where you need to get so and I just so back, and I didn't have an email account then. Um, so I did everything by snail mail. I asked for an application, they sent me one. And then I got in and that's how I ended up in Santa Fe. And I had never been to Santa Fe. Maybe I had been once, maybe once to Albuquerque, but I didn't know where Santa Fe was. I didn't know, I just applied and, and I just sort of transferred from NPC. NPC was great. But as far as the art side of me, it's like, I, I want it more. So that's how I ended up there in Santa Fe. So, and it's been. What great. were your thoughts? No, what were your thoughts of when you got to Santa Fe? Um, like to really be immersed because Santa Fe, when people talk about like the Southwest Indian market, Santa Fe is what comes up. Swaya is what comes up. Uh, to actually physically be there at that time, um, how did that impact your your overall development? I think, um, well, for one, the energy, you know, I just can't sort of, um, I, I can't, I'm not sure how to really explain it, but just the energy for somebody that loves art from the res that haven't, you know, I hadn't really been off the res before. So I send, showed up there in Santa Fe and, the, and I showed up there in 2000 and I didn't know that they were going to have a new campus, like their new location. Um, I just happened to be there at the right time that I didn't see their old campus. So I, when I showed up, they had the new campus and we, we were some of the first ones there. And I was like, oh, there's a new campus. Okay, so I just sort of, um, and it was great. It was refreshing. Everything was new. Um, I just love the energy, you know, that that place had to offer. And then, and then the Institute of American Indian Arts, I just can't say enough about them. You know, it's sort of a nice community that they have, I'm sure like every, like every other, you know, sort of nice small institution, it's not too big, you know, they tend to have that. And, and that's what I had there, you know, and a lot of the people that students that I went to school with, I mean, you know, I made some really good friends out there, a lot of good support um, while I was there, you know, I, they sort of became my family. So of course I get homesick when I was there, um, but again, you know, they were there and it, it was, it was great. It was good, um, and then I just sort of went from there. And as far as like um, art shows, there. So what I would do is I, I would you know go to school during the fall and in the spring, and then the summer break I, I would take off. So the summertime I would try to you know come home and and you know be with family and then do shows whatever I could do, and then so I would do the shows in the summertime whatever I could I could manage and then whatever money I got, I, I would save it, you know. Um, and then when I got back to school, then that's kind of what helped me, you know, help, that's what helped feed me while I was at school. So um, I think, I think it was great. Um, so I had to sort of grow up in a way, learn to be independent. You know, I didn't, I don't come from a family of money, you know, some people do, which is great. But for me, you know, my, you know, my dad wasn't working, you know, I couldn't say, hey, dad, I need some, you know, money or anything. Yeah, that, that's out of the question. And I was ashamed to, you know, so, so art sort of fed me and it, it, it made a weight for me, basically. And sometimes you hear that art saves lives. Um, that's what it did for me. That's awesome. Um, I wanted to pull up some of the, some of your images um, so you could tell us a little bit about about these particular pieces um, and specifically taking a look at right any type of like creative tensions that may exist um, 
during the the creative process and as well as the representation that you're you're aiming for. So here's um, one of the first pieces that uh, really stood out to me um, of the selection that you had sent over to us. If you could tell us a little bit about this piece, that'd be great. Um, yeah, so this one is one of the pieces, um, I, I call them Ye'i wall sculptures, right? I think um, certain native cultures throughout um, the world have, have masked some sort of mask impersonation. They have their own interpretation, their own use for them. And in the Navajo culture, we have that too, right? So I kind of use that as a sort of, as a inspiration, as a starting point. Um, I stumbled on as the idea of mask. Um, so where these guys started was when I was in grad school. So in grad school, I had a thesis show and I had some wonderful professors there. I sort of built a committee. I was, uh, showed up to UNM. I showed up to UNM in Albuquerque and I had a committee. And I remember one of them, one, um, one of my uh, professors there, he was like, well, Mr. Yazi, your, your, your work is really good. You know, we accepted you based on your painting. So, you know, we look at your portfolio and, and we're amazed by it, you know, and we're not really sure what we can offer you in painting. So the question is from here to by the time you get done, um, you have to put on the show, your own, you know, thesis show, and you have to wow us, you know, if you want to get through our program. And that was like, oh man, you know, what, what, what does he mean by that? So the whole time I was there, that was like the big challenge of like, oh man, how, how am I going to do that? You know? Um, so anyways, uh, long story short, um, I took, it took me a lot of time to develop. So I was still painting, but when my thesis show came, there was not one painting in there. Um, I did an insulation. It was an insulation art piece. And now that I'm talking about it, I should have sent you guys some image on that. But, um, but in any case, um, so my, I had a large installation I had this little sort of uh, gallery set up. And then there was a large um, installation sand painting in the center of the room. Um, it wasn't a real sand painting, but I was just the same sort of, it had sort of a, um, it had a, maybe a social political um, sort of hint to it. I wasn't banging people over the head with it, like, you know, it's sort of subtle, but there was also some pieces where I, I put mask and there was gas mask. And then they had mirrors in their eyes. Um, so you couldn't look inside to them, inside them. And then like the feathers and the, sort of the, um, that look to it. So in a way they sort of look spiritual in a way, but they were gas masks. And some of them look a little bit creepy. They, they were kind of like, they have that like sacred feel to it, um, which I really enjoyed. Um, so anyways, but it was an installation piece. So when it was all done, some of my professors really liked the, the max pieces. So I just gave them out, you know, to some of them that, that thought they were cool. You know, I, I gave them away. And then afterwards I took them all apart. Even the sand paint installation, I took it all apart. So that was the end of that, right? But um, a, a, along that time, um, during grad school, I was in, um, I, I, I was, I came home for a winter break. I came home for winter break. I left. I had a, uh, a studio on campus and I left all my paints, all my brushes, all my supplies there and, and I was home. So, and I, I wanted to paint, I wanted to draw, I wanted to do something, but I didn't have anything with me. So, but I found a small piece of wood. It was a little one, maybe like, like so. And then I started carving it and then I had a pocket knife and that's how, they, that's how it started. So it was a very cool, it was a little one, it was a small one. Um, but of course it took, from there it sort of began to grow, more ideas began to flow. And then, so nowadays that's what they look like here. So basically I just go out and I find wood, anything that's dry. Sometimes that's pine, sometimes that's cottonwood, um, kind of like just different, um, whatever wood I can get, right? So if you look at this piece here, um, the wood is broken right there, right? And I like that. There's something about nature's footprint or fingerprint. If I can keep some of that there, I like it. Sometimes the wood, it might be twisted. They might be curved. I try to just take it as it is, do my thing with it, carve it some, 
and then paint it. And then the feathers I just buy year round. Um, I collect feathers. There's some people I, I know that they, some of them own birds. Um, so I trade with them, they give me feathers. Um, and then I just buy them wherever I can find them. Um, and that's how they come along. And I, they're wall sculptures. So um, they hang with a, a deer or elk hide in the background. And that's why you hang them like that. Um, and in this one here, I titled it, We the People. Um, so of course, every, every day you turn on the news, there's some sort of, you know, dilemma going on in the world. And there's a lot of, there's a lot, right? There's a lot, and it's hard to kind of listen to some of it. You know, sometimes it's kind of a downer, like, oh man, you know. So anyways, so that's sort of the idea. So you could take it however way, but I titled it, you know, We the People, of course. You know, the set of words is again, Sort of relating to the to the government, the constitution, you know, the that sort of thing. I'm sort of playing with that idea, um, and then the corn is right in the center of the mass piece, and corn is central in our culture and a lot of other cultures in the southwest. So that's there, and then you also have the indication of the flag on the on the on, from our left side, our left view. There's the stars, the stripes, the red, white, and blue. Um, so even though we might have all these tensions going on, we're sort of still a part of, um, of the country, right? And we have relatives, we have family that are in the military. So it's really hard to um, um, sort of bash, you know, everything because we have family that have given, you know, chose to be a part of that. So that's sort of my idea, my perspective. And then the fingerprints, the handprints there, of course, again, again, sort of goes along with the title, We the People, you know, even though um, you know, um, you know, even though I probably don't have a say in any politics, I don't know everything there is to know, but it does affect us, you know, uh, everyone, you know, our children, our, you know, everyone. So, and then the feathers, some of them, they're, they're adorned on top. Um, some of those feathers are like turkey feathers. I like playing with color different, uh, anything that's legal, I'll, I'll, I'll play with and I'll try to see what colors fit right. Um, for a smaller mass, I might need smaller feathers for some of the big mass like this one that that, that was a larger size piece. So you'll notice the red tail cockatoo feathers way up, you know, on, on each side, um, Australian red tail cockatoo there. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun. And that's been its own thing learning about different types of birds with different feathers. Um, of course, they can get expensive, but, um, but it's great. So yeah, and, and that's a nice it was a nice piece. That one is, uh, I believe, in in Albuquerque on the other side of the the peak there, on the side of the mountain. That's where that one's at. But. No, it's impressive, and and like you're talking about bringing together all those tensions. Um, it's a great starting like discussion piece for really any um, any really any arena from political science to to the arts. And yeah. So um, you know, this is a uh, this is another image that I really loved. Um, it's and for my, I was actually, it was like, this is like a very, uh, for some reason it spoke to me at that because it, Teddy just did, just did the story of it. Um, but I was hoping that you could give us a little bit of backdrop of this, you know, amazing um, painting that we have here of this little donkey um, with a very, when I think of Peter Sinyazi, the background that's going on here is a very standard Peter Sinyazi um, <laughs> landscape. And so I was hoping you could talk, tell us a little bit about this, this particular little donkey here. Yes, I, um, so when it comes to painting, I'm personally, I'm a big fan of realistic art, you know, like portraits, animals, anything realistic, all the, all, you know, all the greats and um, in art history, I, I just love that. But um, the other side of that is I really, I'm a big fan of abstract art. So I love non-objective abstract art. I just love that I can get lost in it. So um, generally in art history, we, we sort of know that, know them as the difference, right? But I'm a big fan of both, so I'm sort of stuck in the middle. So um, in this painting, I'm sort of bringing those two together, right? I'm sort of painting something representational, maybe not as realistic, but it's representational. So you have the donkey there, and there's a lot of sort of interpretation there, you know, a lot of positive interpretations. Um, and then also in the background, you have like the basket designs, you have the, 
the mountain patterns, sort of very nice, subtle, a lot of energy back there. So I'm just sort of putting those two together. Um, and I titled it Twinkle. Um, so like here at home with my family, I have, we have a livestock, you know, we have sheep, we have goats, um, you know, just sort of a little thing going. Um, but as, uh, as far as a uh, donkey, my, my dad and them, they were raised around uh, donkeys and he, he would tell me stories and I just thought it was very cool. Um, so I'm kind of taking a little, that idea, that sort of positive idea, and I'm just basically putting that into a painting where you have a lot of energy, hopefully positive energy sort of in there. And then the twinkle, you know, of course, kind of with the title for our pieces, I always find that a challenge, but this one is like, when I got it done, I was very happy with it. And I was like, oh man, that worked out very cool. So of course the little twinkle in the eye, um, so that's what I put it there. It could be like a symbol of strength. It could be, you know, earlier in our, in this video, in the little beginning of the video, there was a ta with a be. You know, a lot of times when I hear that, I hear which it's ego, you know, and these donkey, these guys are smart, you know, and they're persistent, you know, they have that sort of inner strength. So for me, that's what I was thinking about as it sort of came together. And it's one of those paintings that worked out. Um, sometimes paintings work out pretty good. Sometimes there's a lot of paintings that, that I that I work on and they don't quite get a signature like this one did. So yeah, no, I I I love it. It's just it's adorable, but it also, like I said, it just brings together when I see it, I just see the even just the creation stories of, of Donkey and you know yeah. those mixed mediums that are brought together for to, yeah. to actually make that animal itself that's that's what i really appreciated yeah. about this particular piece because you see that you see like the donkeys just kind of like emerging from 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 those those elements and so that's what i i i appreciated that that piece it spoke to me a lot and i'm like maybe we should get some donkeys i'm sure my husband's going to be really happy about that but uh yeah. <laughs> we'll deal with yes, that later yeah. yes my my <laughs> My two little boys, they're sort of at that age where they want a donkey, they want horses, you know, so, so maybe one day, you know, <laughs> they just need time. And, so no, definitely. We'll get to that. Here's um, an example of, um, you know, one of those more realistic uh, paintings that you were talking about. Uh, we have the snowman. I feel that it's very proper today. We have got between 10 to 12 inches here in Sadie. Um, if you... Could you tell us a little bit about the techniques and the process uh, behind, you know, these these pieces, which also very much screen. This is Peterson Yazzie's uh, work yeah. right here. Um, earlier on, uh, when I was uh, when I sort of got immersed into art, started learning about different mediums. Watercolor was one of those mediums that I sort of stumbled upon that I really enjoyed. Um, for one, I, I enjoyed them because you have to have a certain sense of discipline um, to work with them. You kind of have to have a plan. You kind of have to un uh, have an idea of what you're going to do. So all the white there, all the white that we see, like the snow, the light coming through the clouds. So that is the paper, like the snow on the branches. Um, those are just the white of the paper showing through. So the watercolor is a challenging medium um, you, because you have to have an idea of what you're going to do before you do it, right? So uh, for me, the beauty of watercolor is the sky. You know, if you look at the sky, there's all these colors sort of just splashing around. Um, and then that transparent look, those subtle, um, subtle transition between the sky, the land, like the hill in the background, you know, to kind of control it enough to where you can, you can manipulate that, it requires a certain amount of skill. Um, like, let's say if you work with um, acrylic, you can just paint over something. You can gesso something. Um, but with watercolor, you can only do so much correcting before you have to just start with a new paper. So I, so personally, I like that, that challenge there. Um, that's one of the reasons why I come back to it so often. And I don't do many of these. Um, I sort of taught myself how to do watercolor um, after high school. I learned that I could sort of control it a little bit. Um, and then um, the other thing is, um, you know, during the winter time, that's about probably the only time I do paintings like this. You know, I don't really usually don't paint them in the in the summer. Um, but yeah, and of course the snowman, you know, I remember growing up on the res, me and my brother, um, 
you know, my older brother, who's also passed on, you know, he's, he's not around anymore, but me and him, we would roll, roll up, make our own snowman and that sort of thing. So a lot of that is, is, so when I come back to these paintings, it's sort of like coming back to my childhood memories, being able to sort of play around and sort of bring some of those memories back and then, you know, put some images on paper. And this one I titled it, you know, Winter Hat. Of course, the sheep corral in the back kind of makes, you know, it says, to me it says home because we kind of grew up, my Nolly, um, who just lives across the way, um, she kind of grew up, you know, we, she's always had sheep for the family. so. And then now, you know, where I'm at, I have my own family and we have a small group of sheep and goats and that sort of thing. So to me, that's home, you know. Um, but yeah, it worked out great. It's, they don't all, again, they don't all get a signature, but this one most definitely worked out very well. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, when, when you take a look at those, uh, those pieces, um, I guess, as as a whole, like reflecting upon your career thus far, what challenges do you think have been the most difficult to overcome as a Navajo artist, especially as you're emerging in um, in the art scene for the Southwest art markets? Uh huh. I think um, so. The 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 there's a lot of wonderful, talented artists all over. You know, there's a lot of talent out there. Being an artist, I think it's finding your your own voice, like finding your own your own look, you know. And and I tell my students that I have now is that you know I, I can't I can't teach you a style, you know. That's not something I can teach you. I can just teach you the basics, the fundamentals, the techniques here and there. But the overall look of it is something that happens on its own. And I think you can probably talk to any artist, and they'll probably the the answer to that might be the same. Um, so for me, the, the challenge is, I mean, I, I like, my, my thing is I like all these different mediums. I like these different looks. So, uh, so every time I, so my work as a whole is just navigating my way to what I enjoy, um, what can be challenging, and then I just sort of keep it there. The whole look and the stylization that you just mentioned a couple times, um, that just happened on its own. I didn't really plan or any of that. I think um, there's a lot of great artists out there and it's easy, easy to sort of get caught up in the copycat look, you know, sort of thing. But I think, you know, for a real artist, it's just gonna happen naturally. You know, if you love your work, if you love what you do, it'll just come naturally, you know, but I think it's important to try all the, all the different mediums out there um, to try different approaches. As I mentioned, I'm not really an insulation artist, but but when my thesis show, it was all installation work, you know, so that was something very rewarding for me. Um, I do want to get back to that. But again, you just have to sort of have a place, a location, you know, that, you know, you can't just get a booth and do it, right? So you kind of, that's a whole different route. And that's all new to me. So hopefully one day I can do more installation work like that with an opportunity. So we'll see how that goes. Where do you find your inspiration now um, for for your pieces? Um, inspiration now, um, I'm I'm a you know uh, I talk a lot about being a student. Um, so my students, uh, being a student on my own, all the things I learn, all the good people, the wonderful professors I've had, from IA to UNM to you know to MPC, all these locations sort of help mold me into like who I am. And then where I'm at now, I have a family of my own. You know, I have a better half and then we have three kids. Um, so they're, they're sort of my inspiration now, right? I, I did, so I sort of, you know, um, and then, you know, I have my own sort of, we have our own little place, our own. So, so the Navajo culture, that's where everything's rooted at, right? Going to ceremonies, attending ceremonies, helping, assisting here and there. So that all that is rewarding, rewarding for me. Um, but with this pandemic, you know, I haven't been able to do that. So, um, but once it once we get past it, I certainly look forward to doing all of that again. So, not sure if I answered your question all the way, but <laughs> <laughs> there's no correct answers or, or, or any answers in that in that format but um but yeah no and I I do I hope that we get back to that so soon it's just 
really, really so soon. <laughs> um, yes. Where do you foresee your, your work developing in the future? Um, I think um, it's sort of, for me, it, it's hard to say, but I know right now, um, a lot of times I put my, my work first, like I work with the college. So a lot of my a lot of my attention, a lot of my um, energy go to the college, you know, so like what I do, like I have students that rely on me, so I make sure I'm, I'm available, you know, and a lot of them are going to have their own, um, you know, uh, their own journey as far as maybe different schools, a lot of them, they go, go on to different schools. Um, so I get to be a part of them and their energy, you know, all the things that MPC puts into their students, I get to be a part of that. So. For me, that right now, that that's also very rewarding. So I kind of, you know, take that seriously. Um, and then, so my work, and then on my days off or when I have time, then I'll get to come back and and, and do what I want to, you know. So, um, in the long run, in my art, um, it's sort of hard to say. Hopefully, I can still paint. Hopefully, I can still carve. Um, hopefully, I can you know, the the little jewelry things I'm doing, the wearable art, I like to call them. I'm sort of dabbling with that. Um, so yeah, I'm not really quite sure. Hopefully, you know, the shows continue and I get to still, you know, meet people. That's the other thing that always amazes me is um, that my art kind of talks to, you know, they kind of make connections with people. You know, they get to speak in ways that I couldn't, you know, so which is always blows my mind. So, um, you know, so, so yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, and then we'll, we'll see, but hopefully I'll still be working, um, keeping busy. Are you participating in any of these virtual markets that, that are going on right now, like over in Swaya or at the Herd? I, I did, um, I did the um, Swaya winter market, which I thought was, was pretty nice. It was a good opportunity um, to sort of just interact with people. And then the herd museum is just coming up here in a few weeks, and and I'm going to be working with them. So, I'm one of many artists that's going to be doing doing the virtual show. So I will certainly be doing that. Um, and then I got an email today. The Native Treasures um, out in Santa Fe, they're going to be doing their show. So. Um, and it's been it's been great. Um, you know, the pandemic has sort of made everything tough. Um, so which is which is the other reason why um, I've had to create well I've already I already had a website I already had a website um, but the social media thing I was kind of put off to the side I was like nah I don't I don't want a social media page you know that sort of thing um, but with this pandemic is like you know I get pe I get emails on my website and people are like Mr. Yeah they're like what are you working on you know hey Peterson what are you working on you know what do you, what new work do you have or, you know, things like that. So I think they, you know, just sort of that interaction again with the, with the people. I was like, so I finally gave in and I just created a Facebook page. Um, so, which is new, so barely. And people are like making comments on it. Like, this guy didn't have a Facebook page all these years. He finally has one and that sort of thing. They always make fun of me, but it's been, it's been great, you know. So now I have that. So the, the shows are good. It's a good opportunity to sort of meet with people. It might be very virtually like this, um, but it allows me to interact with everyone. So, so it, it's okay, it's good. Do you miss that face-to-face -face interaction with, uh, with, your, with your admirers and your potential clients? Yes, um, I think uh, that's probably one thing that, that I do miss. And I got, uh, it was very, um, it was very nice when uh, people would email my website and say, we heard there's a pandemic going on on your res and it's out of control, hopefully you're okay. Or, you know, shoot, you know, shoot me an email, let me know how you're doing, that sort of thing. So, I mean, there's people, some of these people that collect my work, they've collected my work since high school. So some of them, they've, they're still collecting my work and some new ones, of course, you know, just, so, it, so it's, it's great. Um, it allows me to interact with people, you know, so once the, this whole thing goes by, um, I certainly look forward to visiting and talking with everyone again. So, we have we're starting to uh, get down and wrap down our hour of conversation with you. Uh, what would 
what is a piece of advice that you would give to emerging artists, let's say in a BFA program, especially like Navajo emerging artists? Mm -hmm. I think um, for, I, I think it, it'll be important. Uh, my advice to them would be if you enjoy art, you know, then great, stick with it. Um, there's so many possibilities, you know, don't worry about style, you know, don't worry about, oh, what should my look be, you know, that should be, that'll happen on its own a lot of time. So, you know, just, you know, I would just encourage them to, you know, um, you know, just do what you love, you know, do what you love, do what you enjoy. Um, you know, some, a lot of, a lot of great artists, some of them go to school, some of them don't. You know, either way, they're, you know, the important thing is that they're enjoying what they do. Um, and I just sort of happened to be in a position where I'm in a higher education and, and art just opened doors for me. So that's what happens. Um, if you enjoy art, you stick with it, eventually doors will start to open. And then, you know, a lot of times like in life, you know, when doors open, it's up to you to sort of make, make the move and walk in if you want to. Or if you don't, you just walk on to the next door. And there's a lot about opportunities. Um, and, and that, you know, I'm sort of a good example of that because I never meant, you know, when I started painting, it was just because I enjoyed it. I never thought about getting, you know, getting a, B, a bachelor's degree, let alone a master's degree. Um, you know, but art opened those doors for me and I just happened to get there, you know, and then, um, so yeah, so just, you know, just keep at it, you know, do what you love. Um, and you know, just, you know, do work that is true to you. I think that's one thing I always stress to my students, you know, um, you know, just do work that is true to you. You know, like all the images, all the images, all the work I put out, it's, it's just based on experience. It's just based on the environment I grew up in. You know, maybe if I grew up in Phoenix, my work would be just different. You know, it, it might have a different flair, a different look to it. If I grew up maybe in Santa Fe, my work might be different, you know, but the work that I do, I think being true to your work is, would be very important because nowadays there's a lot of artists that think, oh, well, oh, that this artist is doing that, let me go do that. Oh, this artist over here is doing that, let me go do that, right? Um, for an artist, I think it's easy to like get tempted by that, but really you have to, you have to be true to your work and enjoy it and then just, kind of go with it and see where it takes you. I think that those are really, you know, really um, honest words. Um, and it goes back to that philosophy, right? that you were talking about, um, which leads us to one of our last questions. Um, when you hear the phrase or what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Oh, for me, um, it, again, it's similar to ego. It's like by your own will, by your own, you know, by your own effort, by your own determination. Um, you know, just like, you know, we all have challenges, you know, it could be financial challenges. You know, for me, as I mentioned, art sort of opened those doors and it made it possible. But there were times where it's like, you know, I sort of, there were times where I sort of, you know, just, just life in general, where I felt like, there was a huge obstacle and there was no way around it. Like for instance, when I lost my, my mom, I was like, you know, I mean, so my mom up to that point was like somebody that I always that I always went to that, hey mom, I need some some shoes, or hey mom, I need a, a jacket, you know. And she would make it happen, you know, her and my dad. But but once once that was once she was out of the picture, I had to grow up, you know, something you know, something sort of went off and it's like, okay, well, I have to figure things out. And then, you know, then education happened and then, oh, and then through my schooling, then my, my older brother, you know, passed away again. And, and that was like another, you know, how do you deal with that? You know, so, so again, like big obstacles, but ego is like, you find it within yourself to, to make it work. You find it within yourself. You just dig deep and you see the bright side of things and then you just make it happen. And that, that's pretty much my interpretation of that. It's like that will, that, that drive that we all have. Um, and there's different ways people deal with it. You know, sometimes uh, people rise to the occasion and then they'll do something. Um, or other times, you know, unfortunately they, they don't rise to the occasion. 
you know. Um, so there's so there's that. So Aguichit ego Aguichit is like by your own will. That's how I understand it. No, thank you very much. Uh, we always love hearing those types of. Uh, there's no direct translation for those kinds of phrases, and so to, to hear people talk about that, that's um, it's always good to to get different interpretations, and they always come back right to the same same concept of you can do it, right? You can just buckle down and and get it done. Yeah. Before we sign off, and because you know Don Whitesinger, who is one of our um, favorite instructors in here, I was hoping that maybe you could let us into a little story that you know about Don that you would like to share. <laughs> Especially as a high school teacher. That's what I'm really interested oh, in. <laughs> was he an yeah, easy high school teacher? Uh, no, he, he was, um, <laughs> yes, he was my high school teacher. Um, I. But there, there's a lot of stories, but um, but he, he's always he's always been great. Like so, here's what he would do. So he, um, he would. Uh, one of the things I remember clearly is, um, you know, after after school, you know, after school, he would offer to to open his classroom back up, you know, for anybody. When we were, I was in the dormitory there in Holbrook. So sometimes in the evening, you know, probably maybe to keep us out of trouble or whatever. So he kind of gave us that option where he would open the door, say, hey, I'm going to have the doors open this evening. If you want to come back in and work on your project or something. Um, so he kind of was able to, you know, sort of open his door and I could, you know, some of us could, you know, go back, you know, come up from after supper or something, go back and or after school, go in and work on our project a little bit more. So um, but yeah, he's he, he's 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 great. So he's great, that drive that he has for his students, that um, encouragement that he has for his students, that uh, healthy class learning environment that he provides. It, so that, that's, that's what I think of, so. Well, thank you very much, Peterson. We appreciate you coming. You're so down to earth and just so have such really honest stories to tell and, and can relate to students on so many different levels. Your students over at MPC, as well as our students here at Tanay College. So we really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Make sure that you guys check out his website. Uh, Peterson, what's your website address? Um, it's petersonyazi.com. Uh, they could also look up my Facebook art page at Peterson Yazi Art. So those are the two places they could find, like the donkey you were showing earlier. There's prints available on there. So there, if anybody likes that, they could hit me up and look it up there. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Go ahead. No. Thank you guys for joining us here at uh, this Wednesday at Hawuthepe. For those of you guys who are um, enjoying the snow as well, let's hope that it keeps coming just a little bit more so that we have a wonderful planting season uh, this summer. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, into our Zoom room. Thanks to everybody listening on KXWR and everybody joining us on our Facebook Live page. We hope that you have a wonderful, safe afternoon. Make sure that you guys keep staying masked up and take care of yourselves. And we will be back our first week in March. Can you believe it's March already? with our next segment at Tal with the Bit. If you guys would like to leave any feedback, please go ahead and do so. The links are located in our, our um, Facebook as well as you, if you want it, you can email us and we can get that to you at ncap. Um, ncap at denecollege.edu um, and that will actually uh, give us some feedback in terms of how the lecture is going, any um, insight that you had from today, any personal connection and submit that back to us and you will be automatically entered into a raffle for one of Peterson's works um, that we're going to be giving away. So make sure that you get those, those surveys back to us. Thank you so much. You guys have a great Wednesday and we will see you later. There's on the go, whoa, whoa, bear hard and stare. There's on the go, they didn't go, bear hard and stare. Hey, you're not.